Are junior developer jobs dead? Let's talk about it. So we all start off as junior developers. Becoming a developer is difficult. In fact, sometimes you have to apply for tens, sometimes hundreds of jobs before you can get that first junior developer job. And today I'm gonna to talk about why that is. Why are so many companies today only hiring senior developers or at least developers with experience? I wanna show you guys an article you can see here who killed the junior developer. It's kind of uh, been floating around for a little while and it's by Melissa McEwen. I'll put a link below in the description. And she noticed a trend a lot where a lot of companies now aren't hiring junior developers. And kind of one of the reasons she goes into, one of the reasons a lot of companies aren't hiring junior developers is because the time and effort it takes to train junior developers is a big drain on resources on the uh, company. What that means is that, you know, it's gonna take a, a senior developer who might be charging $200, $300 an hour for the company. Obviously, they're not getting paid that much. I mean, maybe sometimes they are, but for the most part, they're getting paid less than that, but their time is extremely valuable. And if they spend a lot of time with junior developers, basically all that time is, is kind of in some ways wasted. So they're not being able to build out, they're not being able to be super productive if they're kind of walking junior developers through how to get set up, uh, kind of teach them what to do. And there's also an idea that not all junior developers and not all senior developers get along together well. So it's not, not everybody, not every developer, senior developer, um, has the skills to really take someone underneath their wing and teach them the basics. And it's not, not every junior developer has the skills to kind of learn that way. Sometimes the best way that a junior developer can learn is to do it on their own. So there is some kind of dynamic between a senior developer and a junior developer and how they work together to learn and how you bring a junior developer up to a mid or senior level. There's also a problem in our industry, in our software developer industry, where many, many times uh, a lot of people do job hunting. And I, I think this is just kind of the culture we're in where a lot of especially talented developers are only staying at jobs for two or three years and then they're hopping to another job. And what happens obviously is if you have a junior developer and they only stay at your company for a year or two, all the time and effort and training that you took to bring those people up to speed is kind of wasted because they've, they're only gonna stay for a year or two. So why even bother just hire a senior developer who can then start running and be productive right away. So, I mean, you could say culturally, there needs to be a shift. So instead of hiring, I mean, in, in overall, you can probably just take developers and give them more money, give them more perks to keep them. Obviously, there's some companies that do this really well, like Google, you could probably argue, or Amazon, that pay their developers really well. So even if they... Uh, it's harder for them to move companies because like the incentives, it's really hard at a certain point to make even more money. Um, there's also a lot of companies go for perks by giving lunch, by giving kind of the developers more uh, ways of keeping them inside the company. But I still think there is, especially in the Silicon Valley, there's still this problem where there's so much job hunting that job hopping that is, that's hard to keep good people in a, in for a long time. So the result of all of this is that we're having problems with junior developers getting jobs. So I did a quick survey of a couple of uh, my audiences. If you don't know, I'm in a group called Cotech and Caffeine. I help, I help moderate it. Um, Dylan from Coding Tutorials 360 actually runs it. And I asked a bunch of people on there and I asked a few other Facebook forums too. And I asked people like, how many times did it, how many jobs did it take you? How many interviews? How much time did it take to get your first junior development role? And a lot of people on these forums are people that are self top or switching careers or they got through coding boot camps. I mean, some are traditional computer science or have traditional colleges, but most of them are, are probably like a lot of people that watch these videos. They're just trying to learn programming and get into, into development. And I would say, nine out of 10 of people said it took them like 10 or more interviews. Some people was 50 or more. Some people was over a hundred interviews. So I think it's really, it's becoming ridiculous how difficult it is for junior developers to get 
into the development market right now, especially um, especially if, if you don't have any formal training. So, I, you know, there's no easy ways of fixing this. I know I've always preached that you have to have a good portfolio. You have to have a, uh, a decent GitHub. But I think now I'm going to say that you probably need more than those two. And I think a lot of people that are looking for these jobs already have a GitHub. They already put up a portfolio. They put up a web page. They have some personal branding. I think at this point, um, you really need to go to like local meetups. You need to do some local networking, kind of the easiest and oldest way of getting jobs is to do some networking and, and to, to actually talk to people and, and find out what companies are hiring and then get in good with those hiring companies. Like find the hiring manager, talk to them, maybe, uh, maybe even go out to coffee with them if you can, uh, if you meet, see them at a meetup. So that way you kind of build a rapport before you get into that interview. Now, I think most interviews and most companies are still going to make you do their take home tests. They're going to make, they're going to test your knowledge, but at least if you build up a little bit of rapport, I think you're going to be above a lot of other people that are coming out of nowhere. So I think you have to network now. I think that might be, might be a thing to do. There, there's probably two ways you can go at it beyond the basics that I've talked about before. If you, if you're a junior developer and you're in this position, one, you can be the guy that applies everywhere. I mean, I'm talking about it could be hundreds of resumes you send out. And if you live in a large city, that might be easy. You might actually have to think of outside your city. Think about your area, your state, or even national. So you might have to send out hundreds of resumes all across the country. And you're just bound, kind of the law of, of large numbers there, the law of averages, that you're going to get start getting interviews, even if you don't have much experience. So that might be one strategy. You just kind of spray and pray sort of with your resume. The other strategy would be to like go to your local meetups, try to find mentors that you can talk to. And you're probably going to get rejected if you're trying to talk to a lot of mentors, but try to find people that you can talk to, you get to know, find positions in your area. Maybe you even, this could work for some people. You go onto LinkedIn, you look in your area, you look at the hiring managers, you start messaging people on LinkedIn. You try to build that rapport before you go into the interview. And that could be like a second option. Third option, and you can kind of mix and match these two. You can, you don't have to, these are not exclusive. Third is you build an online portfolio and that's more than a portfolio. You build an online brand, which means you open up like a YouTube page. You create a blog that's really, really well done. Um, you become known in the, in the niche or the industry that you're looking for. So if you're a web developer, you niche down to being really good at Angular or Ember.js, you put up a blog, you start writing about it. Maybe you self-publish a book. I don't know. I mean, you just really have to become really involved in the community. You go, you look for some open source projects where you can either put your name in or even better yet, you come up with your own open source project. So I think that might be a third way. So, I mean, yeah, you could just do the portfolio, do the minimum portfolio, GitHub, send out hundreds of resumes all over the US. That might be the first thing. This is for a new ju junior developer. Second way is you start going to meetups, you start building up your personal network and connections. If you already have a personal network, reach out to them. First thing to do, go to your Facebook. Hey, I'm a new developer. Is anybody looking for developers? Boom. That's like one, one, like one really low hanging fruit way of trying to connect your network. The second way is going through your address book, looking at every single person you've ever talked to. Maybe that guy you worked with three years ago and say, hey, I haven't talked to you, Bob, in a while. I'm a developer. Do you guys know of any positions? Maybe even start off freelancing. Hey, do you know any places looking for a full-time or a freelancer? I can jump in, help you guys out. And you just go down through, you know, email 20 of the people on your contact list to see if anybody's interested. It's also a good way to keep in touch with people, by the way. And then you go to the meetups. Maybe you find a mentor. You find someone. And by the way, when you, you're going to mentor, that's a whole nother video, but... You, that might be another strategy, but you can find someone that's like a director or VP in one of the companies that might be go to one of these events. And you don't have to say, will you be, I, I want to be your mentee. Can you be my mentor? But maybe you start building a relationship with that person. It has to be both ways of obviously you don't want to just be using people and there's a whole art to that, but you can maybe get insight. They can help you move up in companies. They can recommend you to the company they have. 
um, you start putting yourself out there a lot more, you know, that might be the, the second way. And of course, the third way is probably the hardest is you build a, an online brand. You, you have a, a fully featured website, you start doing YouTube videos, you write a blog, you write a book, you might do some conference talks, and then you kind of build a name in the, in the sphere that you want to be. And then eventually companies will start coming to you. So, I mean, that's a couple of my ideas. I think this article is, is pretty good because th there is a problem in our industry. There's definitely a problem when I see, when I was going to these groups and everybody's telling me that they put out 20, 30, 50, 100 different resumes to get a job. I, there's definitely a problem here because there's very talented developers. And now, of course, there's always going to be that guy that sent out one resume and he got a job or he asked to get a job. You know, he wasn't even looking for a job and some recruiter hooked um, talk to him and he was able to get one. But I think for the most part, a lot of junior, a lot of people getting into the industry are having a tough time getting a job. So uh, on one other thing I just thought of, um, recruiters, I, I you're going to have mixed feelings about recruiters. Some recruiters are going to be really, really good. Some are, you're just, you're just going to be kind of used and they're not going to help you as much. So you're gonna, and I would say maybe go with multiple recruiters, especially if you're brand new. And there's so many of them that if you just Google recruiter, you might even be able to reach out to them first, send them your CV, they might be able to place you. A lot of times they have a list of companies that need jobs. And so if they're, those companies aren't looking for junior developers, you're still gonna be the same problem you had before, but I think that might be a way to do it too. So I hope that helps you guys out a little bit to, to uh, of ways you guys can, uh, I think that to get a job for junior developers. By the way, I'm gonna include a link below. I have my friend Jason is running a course on Unity 3D, it's a master class on Unity 3D. So if you're looking to get into game development, game program, or you're just looking for fun or as a career, this is a great place to go. I'm giving away one free copy of that course. It's normally $500 I'm giving away for free. Jason, by the way, has done years and years of experience in Unity. I, if all you need to do is click on the link below for the contest, you enter your name and your email, and I will let you guys know next week one winner will win a copy of this $500 course. So check it out. Make sure you uh, put your name, log in, or put your name and email address, and just click on that link in the description. That'll be cool. Thanks, guys. And let me know below what you guys think.